Hey, this is Tyler, Technical Evangelist for Portrait Displays. In this video, we're going to be calibrating a BenQ SW270C using a 1D and 3D lookup table with CalMan 2020. This process is also very similar to the BenQ PV270 and the SW321C. I have already connected the BenQ monitor to my laptop with a USB A to B cable. So the USB A connector is plugged into my laptop and the USB B connector is plugged into the BenQ monitor. Okay, now that that is complete, we're going to open our BenQ workflow. So I'm gonna to go to the CalMan right here, go to open workflow template, display specific, and BenQ monitor calibration. Okay, now we're gonna click the start calibration button. And the first thing we're gonna do is find meter. Now we are using the portrait displays C6 HDR 2000. So we want this right here checked and nothing else checked right now. And then hit search. You will see the lights on the C6 flash when it's connecting and then it will stay illuminated once it's connected. Okay, now we're gonna select our target display type or EDR. We're gonna go down to PFS Phosphor BenQ monitors. Okay, now we're gonna to connect to the monitor itself by hitting this find monitor button, going to BenQ as the manufacturer and model PV270 or SW270C or SW321C and hit connect. You will see the screen flash on the BenQ monitor as the connection process happens. Okay, now the monitor is connected. We can see up here, BenQ monitors. Now we're gonna to connect to our pattern source. Now you have a couple of options here. You can use the built-in pattern window in CalMan that just opens like this. If, if you have your CalMan machine is permanently connected to the BenQ, or you can use client three, or if you're going to be using this as a standalone video display, you can use an external pattern generator. And that's what I'm going to be doing in this video. And we're going to connect to our VideoForge Pro pattern generator. Okay, so we're going to connect external pattern generator. So we're going to click the button here. We're going to go under Manufacturer SpectraCal and Model VideoForge Pro. And then we need to select the correct COM port that the VideoForge Pro is connected to. In this case, it's COM9. Hit connect. Okay, now that we've connected everything, I'm gonna go up to the VideoForge Pro settings. We wanna make sure we're in RGB 8-bit full range. I recommend full 100% patterns and a one second pattern delay. Okay, we can click out of here and go on to the next step. This is where we're gonna set up our targets for calibration. So I'm gonna set this up to master HD regular 1080p content with a BT709 color gamut, D65 white point, and 2.4 gamma curve. So we already have D65 and Rec709 or BT709 selected. So I'm gonna change EOTF to power and then 2.4. Now, if you're using this monitor in a broadcast environment, you may want to use the BT1886 EOTF here but for post-production and color grading, I would recommend 2.4 power gamma. Okay, AutoCal Delta E formula. I'm gonna change this to DEITP for increased accuracy. Then we're gonna to go to next. Now we're gonna measure our pre-calibration measurements. This is not reflective of what the display's factory calibration is because this is just what's in our calibration mode one, whatever it was previously calibrated to or not calibrated to.
Okay, our pre-calibration measurements are complete. So we're gonna to go to next right here. And we wanna, we can select one of calibration one, two, or three. And we are doing the 3D LUT method. So you wanna make sure you select the 3D LUT here, here, or here. Okay, now we are going to reset the current picture mode by hitting this button. This can take up to 15 minutes. So we're gonna fast forward this part in the video. Okay, now the picture mode has been reset, so we're gonna go on to the next step. We're actually gonna set our peak brightness, so if we go to read continuous here, okay, we're at 260 nits. It, we're gonna be targeting 100 nits, or candelas per meter squared. Okay, so let's try to go half this amount. So you can just click on each end of this to go up or down one value but it can be tedious, click, 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 click. So I recommend getting close to where you wanna be by just clicking here and then you can type in on the keyboard exactly what you're looking to get. So I'm gonna try 50 and then hit enter. Okay, now we're down to 140, so let's try 35. And then hit enter, 113. So I usually go for about five to 10 to 15% brighter than the target that we're calibrating to because we can we have to take out some of one of the colors, whether it be red, green, or blue in the white balance to hit D65. So it's going to reduce the luminance. So I would actually, I'm gonna go down to maybe 33. Okay, so I'm gonna hit stop. We're gonna go with that. And then we're gonna go to the next page. Okay, here's where we're gonna start our calibration. We're gonna be doing the 1D lookup table and then the 3D lookup table. So we're gonna hit our auto cal button right down here. And it's gonna ask us which points we want to do and what our delta E target is. Now, if you're using uh, a different Delta E formula besides ITP, I would set this to 0.5. If you're doing ITP, I would set it to one because ITP typically has a larger value. Okay, so for active grayscale points, I'm gonna select 33. I found that that's kind of the best trade-off between time and results. There's very minimal improvement with the longer ones, the 52 or um, 65 steps. Okay, so we're gonna hit our OK button and it's gonna run through this 1D LUT AutoCal and we will speed up the video so you don't have to sit here for 10 to 15 minutes. Okay, the 1D LUT is now complete. It took a little over 15 minutes. So now we're gonna hit okay, and then we're gonna do our 3D LUT. So we're gonna do lightning LUT um, 
I found that it gives great results, but if you want ultimate accuracy, you can do one of our fixed grid methods. Nine points is 729 readings, 17 is close to 5,000 readings, and 21 is close to 10,000 readings. So you can, usually those are done where you just let it run overnight so you're not taking up the monitor during the day or something. Um, that's a pretty common process, but for this video, we're just gonna be doing our lightning LUT. Okay, so we're going to hit OK. It's going to take 101 readings, and then it will calculate our correction 3D LUT and then upload it to the monitor as soon as it's done calculating. So we're going to hit OK, and then it will run through that process. Okay, our lightning LUT is complete. It took a little over 10 minutes. So now we can go on to our post calibration validation. Now we're gonna validate our peak luminance. So I'm gonna do a read series here. We're at 97.9. Let's see if we go up one where we're at. 99.8, okay, let's leave that there. Go to next. Now we're going to do our post calibration measurements. We're going to hit our read series button down here. Okay, our measurements are complete for post calibration. Next step, we can either save and view a report or if we want to do additional validation, we can do our color checker here, and then we can also do our saturation sweeps. And then it will take us back to our generate report page. Thanks for watching. More videos to come. See you next time. Thanks for watching. Let us know what you think in the comments section below. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. See you next time.